Hi everybody, Josh Corman from bookriot.com with you once again to talk about the Read Harder Challenge. On this video, I want to talk about the retelling of a fable or fairy tale task. I don't know if it's just me uh, or if it really is this way, but it feels like in recent years there's been uh, kind of a swift uptick in the amount of books being written, novels being written, where uh, they take a fable or fairy tale, something that's really well known, and reimagine it, repurpose it in some way. Uh, I've actually talked about uh, Odyssey, the, the comic that I like so much from Image, uh, that's Matt Fraction and Christian Ward uh, are the writer and artist on that, and they've done something like that. It feels like I'm seeing that in a lot of places. Maybe those stories are uh, just kind of jumping up in popularity, maybe because you're able to take those forms and those structures and those characters that are so well-known and well-worn uh, and inject something new into them which really speaks to people because they've got the familiarity but they've also got something new to pair with it. So a few recommendations for you this week. The first is a book called Wicked by Gregory Maguire. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you're probably familiar with Maguire and his work. Wicked is, I'm pretty sure, the first uh, of the books that he released that do exactly what I was just talking about. They take a familiar story, a common kind of fable or fairy tale, in this case, one that's a little bit more modern itself in uh, The Wizard of Oz, and it takes kind of this adult look, I guess is maybe the best way to say it, at the trials and tribulations of all those characters that we're so familiar with, both from Baum's work and, of course, from uh, the famous movie from 1939. Uh, what's so cool about Wicked is that it prescribes a much, much deeper psychology to all of the characters, and their motivations are not exactly as they're presented uh, in the movie. If you ever read the True Story of the Three Little Pigs, which was a kid's book that came out, I think, maybe when I was in elementary school, so it's been out for, uh, for quite a while, and it tells the Three Little Pigs story from the wolf's point of view. That's kind of what Wicked is. It's not all from the perspective of the Wicked Witch of the West, uh, as she becomes known in the, the books in the movie, although not here uh, in Wicked. That's not how she sees herself. And in fact, there's actually a lot to like about her and a lot not to like about Glenda the Good Witch. Uh, Dorothy comes into it kind of only from the side. I've still never seen the musical, which has won all sorts of awards and has been playing running uh, for a very long time. Uh, but that kind of tells you the phenomenon that this became and why it's so interesting to people or how well it works. And as the source material for that play and for a lot of the books that kind of came after, this sets uh, the stage and sets the template of taking this alternative perspective and really examining what turn out to be very human problems for all of the, uh, the creatures and the inhabitants of the Land of Oz. And so even though you know the story in one way, uh, in a lot of ways, the injection of, of kind of fresh ideas and fresh material into this story keeps you guessing. And it feels in that way kind of like a, a peek behind the curtain, like this is the real story and the Frank Baum books and the movie uh, are kind of the polished over kids versions. One of the things that I think stands up best about Wicked is its examination of good and evil and how the assumptions that we make about uh, people that we want to prescribe these sort of black and white um, good and evil moral judgments toward typically do not see themselves that way and the explanations are not quite that simple. The next book I want to talk about is by Helen Oyeyemi. It's Boy Snow Bird. I think Boy Snow Bird came out early last year. It is more or less a retelling of Snow White. It doesn't stick to the exact same characters uh, like Wicked does, which kind of just views the same characters from this other lens. Uh, but it takes that story and uses it instead as a template to examine racial identity issues. It's set in Massachusetts in the 1950s, and Boy Snow Bird, the title of the book, actually those three words refer to the three names uh, of characters. Boy is actually the name of a woman who we see grow up. She gets married to a man who already has a daughter named Snow. And then Boy and Arturo, her husband, actually have a child together named Bird. It comes to light that Arturo and his daughter have been passing as white for Snow's entire life. She did not know that, but tensions arise. Boy actually ends up sending Snow away out of the house, and then we kind of see things from Bird's perspective as she tries to reconcile everything that has happened and her own understanding uh, of identity and family and the loss of a stepsister who she wants to understand more fully and wants to know uh, in the wake of this kind of family fracture that goes on. And it's an exploration of those questions of racial identity as well as family. Oyeyemi is another uh, writer who has done this same kind of thing a lot where she takes uh, a, a fable or a traditional kind of story uh, and reimagines it. There's a book that she wrote called Mr. Fox that I think kind of landed her 
uh, on the literary map. It is another kind of slanting reimagining uh, of a fable. The last recommendation is actually a comic uh, which has now ended its run called Fables. Uh, and, and I think if I'm correct, there are 22 trade volumes uh, of, the, of the comic that started running, I believe, in 2002 and just ended, uh, I think, this last summer. If you have a library card, this is a great way to take advantage of it. Uh, go pick up the trade volumes of that because there are so many. Obviously, it would be pretty expensive to pick up all those in one fell swoop. Fables is a comic that basically transplants characters from folklore and fairy tales. Bill Willingham is the author, and he's kind of famously said that the main criteria for him to include a character in Fables is are they available in the public domain? Is this a, a character that I would have to pay for uh, to use the rights to? And do I want to involve them in the story? And Fables actually has a lot of stories that go on over the course of more than 150 issues, as you might imagine. But as I said, they transplant characters from mythology and folklore and fables into the contemporary world and into New York specifically to a place that the characters refer to as Fable Town. Now, a lot of the characters, for example, who we might consider the main character is more or less the big bad wolf uh, named Bigby in the book. And Bigby is more reformed as a character than his alter ego in the folklore universe. And so he's actually a detective who is trying to solve the murder of Rose Red, who's Snow White's sister. That's how the whole thing opens, this kind of murder mystery. The characters have been kind of forcibly removed from their fairy tale homeland uh, and forced to resettle in New York, and their safety and security comes uh, under stress when Rose Red is murdered. That's just kind of the first arc. From there, a ton of different characters uh, that you would recognize from folk tales and mythology get brought into the fold. Uh, you've got this kind of thriller aspect, a detective story arc is in there, and it branches off in a ton of different directions. I'm not going to try to capture 150 issues uh, worth of character and story arc into one short video here. But if you like comics, or maybe you haven't gotten into comics because of the whole superhero thing, and you feel like that's that whole universe uh, is just too much to try to dive into uh, blindly, then Fables is a great comic that doesn't really play to any of that stuff and has this different draw for its source material. It's really smart. It's always fun to see these characters brought to life in reimagined ways. Uh, the same things that I've talked about Wicked and Voice No Bird doing, Fables does as well uh, in giving us kind of a different lens through which to see some of these characters uh, who have, like the characters in these other stories, very human problems, very contemporary real life kind of issues uh, that just happen to be played out through the familiar personalities of these really well-known characters. So pick up one of those three or find another retelling of a fairy tale or a fable and let us know about it. Whatever book you read, tell us in the comments here below the video. Share those with us on social media. Use the hashtag readharder to tell us what books you're finding to complete these tasks of the challenge. Other people who are doing the challenge can find those as well. Uh, use those recommendations to seek out books for themselves. Thanks for participating in the Read Harder Challenge. We are near the very end of this year's just a couple of months to go. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.